Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Cameron. I'm Alex. And we are uh, all that's left. Everyone else is gone. We are broadcasting to you in the dark. We don't know if anyone's... No, we can totally see you all. If you're receiving this message, we are broadcasting to you from the year 2018. 20XX. <laughs> ambiguous. It could ooh, be 2000, ooh, yeah. it could be 2099. Ooh. Anyway, uh, we decided that we wanted to do a bonus stream today since many of our friends are at PAX and uh, we wanted to... <laughs> many of people, many of the people I find it convenient to call friends. Um, <laughs> Whoa! That was so much worse! Was it? Maybe. Oh, well I'm sorry. Just more clinical. Uh, anyway, Paul is here on tech handling tag for us on this bonus Hello. stream where Alex, had, uh, your idea was to do a quick show and tell. Well, yeah, the show and tell is going to be a means like to an framing, end. the framing, framing device. Yeah, we brought this. some stuff to look at, uh, but mm -hmm. it's really just like a, a leaping off point because we realize that uh, on our other streams, um, we tend to sort of just like tangent off. Yeah. And that's fun. Yeah, and then we, like we the game goes, kinda... yeah, the game goes offline because we've been AFK talking about whatever. Yeah. So, uh, I bet you're wondering what's uh, mm -hmm. what's on this table. Yeah, well, yeah, we've both brought something to, to, to show you and tell and describe and hopefully start as the seed for a fertile discussion. Mm -hmm. So, Alex, yeah. why don't you tell us a bit about what you brought for show? So, a while back, I discovered that I had, I mean, the you know the crap shot that Graham did? Uh, where he's just like, look, it's the last thing in my <laughs> life that gives me joy that I haven't monetized, monetized yet. Hey, you boys. Hey, hey, guys. Here's yeah. an unboxing. Like, I had that same experience, mm -hmm. but I was like, my precious. Yeah. Um, I realized that, like, as fun as it is to make your, you know, your fun your work and your work your fun, mm -hmm. um, sometimes that line gets sort of Blur yeah. hazy. Yeah. It, it, I mean, we, we do this thing where we enjoy making these videos quite a lot, and we enjoy streaming and uh, doing all... All the content we produce, we produce because we enjoy making it. Yes. So it's fun for us. But at some point, there, the line blurring, the the axiom where uh, you know if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life, is objectively <laughs> wrong, right? Because now it just means that the things that we enjoy doing are things that yeah. are now work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, the really crazy one was like when I would go to work and play video games and then go home to unwind by playing video games. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I need something for me. <laughs> That I don't share with anybody. So this mm -hmm. is a thing that I've actually not even been sharing on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and I probably will continue to do so. But I can show you the end result. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered, or rather rediscovered, um, scale model building. Ooh, yeah. Which, which I mean, you, you I, I did as a teenager. So did I. Okay. Yeah, I, I used to build um, plastic kits. I did a little bit of Warhammer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try to not fall back into that because, like... That's just gonna live and like evacuate my entire. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you thought magic was expensive. How about a nerd thing that's really, really expensive and cannot be resold? Yeah, and at also e at equal or higher value. Yeah, also uh, your collection does not go in a binder; it goes in a piece of furniture. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, my dad uh, for many years he's into aviation a lot because mm -hmm. Air Force brat. Mm -hmm. um, he just loves planes. Um, I went closer to the ground and I like uh, mm -hmm. armor. Right. So, um, what's here is a kit I've been meaning to make for a really, really long time. Mm. This is the Sturmtiker, uh, which is a <clears throat> it's a 380 millimeter rocket propelled siege mortar. <laughs> that was a, a late war design. It has the um, uh, the dubious distinction of being one of the least photographed tanks mm -hmm. of the war. So, I think that I'm trying to remember the exact history of this. Um, I, I why, why didn't they photograph it? Just because it was they were didn't uncommon? get many photos of it. Like I, I think I, this was like like near the end of the war. They they right. needed something uh, for uh, street fighting in like Stalingrad. Mm -hmm. They're like, what I assume this do? might have also been a response to um, uh, Kursk. Maybe. Where, I, I don't know, when did, when did these things start appearing? Like, 44? <sighs> I really wish I knew the exact year that they made, like, a tiny handful of these. Um, it's uh, a Tiger chassis, mm -hmm. 
and they stripped off the top and put on this superstructure. Right. So the rest of this is just like a regular um, tiger body. Which and was the kind of the biggest thing they had rolling. Yeah, it was pretty big. And, and they installed this gigantic um, rocket projector mm -hmm. that would fire these things. I really wish I had a human for scale, but like, here's a, here's a 55 gallon mm -hmm. oil drum. Yeah, and, like a, a six the, foot tall human might come up to like here. So that's the projectile. So it's like five feet long? Yeah. So they, they this was like designed to demolish buildings. Right. So this would just like drive up and be like, you know, that, you know, that apartment it is in a way. <laughs> right. Dead. Um, I can't remember when I first saw this tank and like fell in love with the design because it, it kind of looks like an anime tank or like a mm, like a mm -hmm. video game tank. Well, I, I remember watching a, a video made of these two historians who were talking about it was a lecture about the Battle of of Kursk at this museum, <clears throat> uh, and the first historian starts by throwing up like a picture of a tiger tank, and he's like, "When I was in fifth grade, I would stare at this picture for hours and hours and hours, <laughs> and now that I'm a fifty something year old man, I stare at this picture for hours and hours and hours. Now I have a different context for it now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah." I mean, there definitely is that. Um, so, a little about the model itself. Mm -hmm. um, model building is kind of like inventing your own problems. <laughs> right. I I actually like, I had designs to build this kit for years and years and years and years, mm -hmm. and then um, I finally bought the kit, which is, I think it's a Tamiya kit, mm -hmm. um, and it sat on my shelf for quite some time. And then mm -hmm. I finally decided, I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm going to build this stupid thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to to do it in this sort of like dilapidated um, kind of abandoned state. And I did a whole lot of, you know, weathering effects on it. And I also did the, the base. Also, you can see just a little bit at the back, there's indentations where the, the treads went. Ooh, yeah. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's very subtle. But you can just see the ground having been uh, pressed in in its final resting place. Mm. Um, and the the sort of the visual storytelling here is that this was in the middle of being um, resupplied, and then it took around here and right into the engine. You can see so the the uh, fender is bent up. I was going to do a little bit more blackening around here, but I didn't get around to it. Um, and there's just like left in place. Hmm. Um, I love the idea of yeah building a model of a broken tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As opposed to like this is what it looked like when it was new. Yeah. Well, like that that lecture that I saw. Oh, I also like the the hatch in the back. Oh being... yeah. Th th there's a bunch of. Um, I I didn't glue down all the hatches because mm -hmm. I wanted to leave myself some options. Um, actually, almost everything. Uh, comes apart. Ooh. Um, I'm just going to try to pick this up because you know I wanted to leave myself as many outs as possible. So like the these hatches come off, Oop. and even the the shell lifting crane. Hmm. Is that stretch sprue or wire? That's actual wire. That's like oh wow, tiny thin wire that I like wound a little spool of. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, because it, it comes like this, but there's nothing on it. Right. So I actually, like, wound this spool of wire and threaded it through. It mm -hmm. doesn't stand straight. Mm. But also you can see the uh, the bore here. Jeez. It's a... It's very big. Yeah. Very, very big. There must have been some kind of apparatus on the inside to load the shell, because there, I imagine it must have weighed, there like, is. 100 kilos. There's actually this little oh, ramp with the carriage. rollers right. there is where it goes on you may just like roll it in hmm. the driver goes down here and i think there, there's space for a radio operator huh uh, i gotta love that five foot long shell exploding right beside your head yeah rocket propelled shell just like okay cover your ears <laughs> what the kind of thing where everyone around it has to open their mouth to keep for their heads from That's, exploding from the pressure i didn't realize that i was watching um like a uh, 
It was a Russian tank, like um, a. Oh, was it the was it the Soviet kind of analog to this? The Su one twenty two and it's, one fifty five. I think it's a contemporary piece because it has a, oh. an auto loader. Oh, okay. And the guy's like pumps a shell in, and he's like, you know, up, ah! and then he goes <laughs> like this, and then it fires, and it's mm -hmm. to like you know keep it, the pressure from like <laughs> to keep from scannering everyone. I guess and, like, so. I don't think it, it would actually make your head explode, but, but it would, probably like damage your hearing. It'd be like more ow than, more than it already would. <laughs> like ah. Hmm. Um, yeah. So the uh, the grass on this, I'm fiercely proud of because. Right. Uh, I built my own electrostatic flocking unit. Yeah, because this is static grass. This is right? static grass. Um, Which is, is it still made of fiberglass? I have no idea what it's made out of. I hope it's not dangerous. Because mm. when I, I, I used uh, static grass when I was making Warhammer figures to put on their bases. And mm -hmm. the way you would do it is you would, you know, paint glue onto the base in the place where you want the static grass, dip the base in the static grass, knock off as much of it as possible, mm -hmm. and then gently blow across it. Hmm. And the static grass, uh, because it would become statically charged, uh, would all stand up. So yeah, this is uh, a similar idea. Um, the base, which first of all, I built out of spackle. Mm -hmm. I just like painted that pink spackle, so it looked like it was made out of marshmallow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I like pressed the tank in. Uh, and to get the impressions and sort of sculpt it a little bit. Uh, and then I massively overpainted the uh, undercoat because it ended up covered in grass. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the way the electrostatic flocker works is um, <clears throat> it's uh, got a negative anion generator. A anion. 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 An anion. Yeah. Uh, I remember in high school, our our my our chemistry teacher was like, "This is how you can tell the difference between somebody who is a chemist and an English student is they will call it a anion and a cation, <laughs> which is on one hand the correct way to pronounce those words, and on the other hand, not the way they are pronounced." Yeah. Um, so you put the negative terminal into the glue mm -hmm. that you cover the base in, mm -hmm. and then the positive terminal is attached to. A mesh in this case, like I got a uh, a sieve from a dollar store, mm -hmm. and you put the um, grass into the the mesh, apply a charge, and then just shake it, and it makes mm. everything stand up mm -hmm. when it sticks to the uh, to okay. the ground. Yeah, because it's trying to get away from it. Yeah, because if you just like sprinkle this, it would go everywhere, look like a haystack. Yeah, um, but this way, it actually like stands up and looks like real real mm. grass. I also spend an afternoon painting small rocks to look like bigger rocks. <laughs> yeah, it's always interesting the way that those things don't scale. Right? Yeah, like these were all different colored rocks of mm -hmm. various different types, and I just painted them and then dry brushed them to make them look uniform and larger. Mm. Cool. Also, because I'm a masochist, I applied Zimmerit to this kit. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. It's, it's kind of hard to see, actually. Unless you get really up close. Yeah, no, but it, yeah, it's along the sides. So, yeah, Zimmerit is... This is so funny because it's like um, a technology they applied that didn't even really do anything and is now a giant pain in the ass for mo scale <laughs> modelers. Um, it's a ceramic-like uh, material applied to the hull mm -hmm. with a trowel, and it's um, it's sort of... The, the reason it has this sort of, um, it's the, the sort of white stuff you can see mm -hmm. on the front. Um, the reason it has that texture is, I think, to save on weight. Yeah, well, I mean... It's formed into ridges, mm -hmm. either using a rake or, I think, just like a hand trowel or something. Yeah, there you go. So, um, it's to prevent magnetic mines from sticking to the hull. Right, yeah, just putting enough space that the magnet can't talk to the metal. Yeah, except the Germans were the only ones who developed magnetic mines. Mm-hmm. Nobody else did. Yeah. But they put it on all their friggin' tanks, and they had all sorts of different patterns, like waffle pattern, mm -hmm. and like this combed pattern. It's like, okay, so, okay, we're gonna give you the magnetic mine technology so that our countermeasures are all proper. <laughs> so, I thought about doing, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can either do it with putty, you can do it with, um, uh, I think some people can actually like just meld the plastic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've, I've seen that using using a, um, uh, yeah. a soldering iron. I go like, bad real fast. Yeah, I yeah. bought a kit 
that had pre-printed, well, not pre-printed, it was like resin cast Zimrit for a tiger tank. Hmm. And so I just had to do a little bit of trimming, um, painted it sort of cream colored, stuck it to the tank, and then like did a bit of paint over top and chipped it away hmm. where there was damage. So you can just sort of see where it's flaked off. Apparently it's surprisingly durable stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I remember reading somewhere that they were expecting it to kind of like fall off and it, if oh, you can like, still find these wrecked tanks, they will still have it applied. Yeah, you can also see like direct shell impacts and it's like a little bit around. Huh. Like it doesn't shatter outwards, it's just, yeah. Hmm. Also, the, this fuel, I'm very proud of this fuel hose. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. So this was a piece of empty wire tubing, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's really good. Like shielding? Like yeah. The, yeah. So when you hit this with a hairdryer, it gets very floppy. Mm -hmm. And then when you take the hairdryer off, it hardens up again. Right, right, right. But it's uniform along the entire length, just about, and it's mm -hmm. hard to get it precise. Okay. Um, so I like hit it with a hairdryer and then would like stick it down and like you know make it soft and you know so that it would be malleable and try to get a realistic kind of uh <clears throat> pattern going i also had to figure out where the gas cap was hmm. on this tank uh apparently it's these little x's here huh there's i think there's a fuel tank there and there and i think there might be two more here hmm. uh because i'd never seen the cap off of one right I, right I right do a lot of research um, Where did you find the, um, the, this, the, the, the hose, or not uh, the hose, the, um, this the came in a kit. Spigot? Yeah, this is like a German, um, uh, is it not 20 liter, maybe 20 liter drums. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it kind of, it, it came with this fuel pump. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, put that together. I, <laughs> I actually bought an engine kit, but it was for the wrong tank. It was for a Panther. Oh. And I was like, eh, oh, this isn't going to fit. Yeah. Because it had, like, um, a photo etched Oh, yeah, brass photo etched. Because yeah. you, you can actually get the entire engine compartment in here. And, like, there's photo etched grill covers on these vents. Mm -hmm. But, like, that's, like, a whole... Hmm. A, a hole you can disappear down very rapidly. Yeah. Like, um, my one of my uncles, um, many, many years ago, probably, like, close to 40 years ago, mm -hmm. bought a wooden kit of HMS Victory and decided that he wasn't really satisfied with the level of detail on it. <laughs> that model remains uncompleted to this day. Yeah. But gets, in, you, you, you gets asymptotically closer to production, right? As he, as he sources, you know, the correct scale cannonballs and gets the right kind of copper because like Victory had like a copper bottom so he needs to like get the correct oh my God. thickness of copper and occasionally has to pull it all off and put new stuff on and... yeah like the thing is is that you know once you're like oh we'll add this detail that like branches outwards into a bunch of other details that you yeah. have to add yeah yeah like there's so much other stuff i could have done like the um the shells themselves came packed wrapped in um these like pieces of wood and mm -hmm. like steel banding Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody makes a kit for that. Um, hmm. So I was just like, yeah, maybe I'll just have one or two of these lying around or something. Um, I didn't do a lot of stuff inside. I'm, hmm. I may yet do a little bit of extra detail. You see, I started putting in individual strands of long grass. Yeah, yeah, which is I a like that. Really painstaking process. Like just getting tweezers and like dipping it in cyanoacrylate and just being yeah. like, why won't you stick? <laughs> Just stick. Uh, good old CA. Yeah. Do you use Zappa Gap or Zap? Uh, I think I use Zappa Gap. Hmm. It's a little thicker. Mm, the thick boys. Mm. But yeah, uh, I think the last detail I might add on this is I bought um, some chopped leaf material. Oh, okay. And I think I'm going to like sprinkle it on the grass to make it look like early autumn. Ooh, I like it. So that'll be cool. Maybe get a little tiny bit over the tank. Wild. I also really like the, the rust drips on the back mm -hmm. of the fighting compartment. Yeah. Um, where it's running from like the, um, uh, I guess the, what would they be? The, that's where you would store like a, uh, 
or stash a uh, a tool of some kind, right? Yeah, and most of the tool kind of racks like are filled. Runs down from other um, things. The rust effect. Uh, I was trying to get the hairspray technique to work, and I couldn't mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. it happen. The um, hairspray technique is you you do an undercoat, mm -hmm. and then you put an intermediary coat made of hairspray. Right. So that undercoat would be the color of like the metal. Yeah, underneath. the bare metal or rust or whatever, mm -hmm. and then the top coat is what the paint looks like. Mm -hmm. And then once those layers are dried, you hit it gently with a, uh, a wet paintbrush and it flakes away realistically. Mm -hmm. But it just didn't work. So I used salt. Yeah, yeah, which is what I, I've used when I do my own armor kits, where you, again, like you would paint the metal undercoat of what you want it to look like underneath, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, spray it with water and then sprinkle rock yeah. salt on it. Yeah. And then airbrush whatever the top coat is and then mm -hmm. brush off all the salt. Yeah. And you wind up with this really gorgeous flaked pattern. It's it's basically like it's you're doing a mask is yes. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um salt is just like a a cheap abundant cheap abundant functionally inert material mm -hmm. that you're uh doing this with. So, yeah, um this is the first of many other kits which I think I will probably end up showing like the final step of. Ooh, okay. But um, I'm very deliberately keeping the actual process of like building these, so you know you probably won't see this on TTC. Did you wind up using any uh, powders or pastels? Mm, yeah, uh, on the tracks mm -hmm. I used pigments, mm -hmm. which are just like dry powdered um, uh, colors. So there's like there's actually a kit that. Um, MIG does, I think. Mm -hmm. You can maybe see just the front. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, it gives it a very dry looking appearance of just like old rust. You get like a dark one and you just sort of like tap it in and then you get like the lighter mm -hmm. one and then quite a light one. Um, yeah, I also scored um, an airbrush, uh, mm. which I'd not had a chance to use before. And holy man, they're, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, I need to truck mine out. I've got like this really nice double action airbrush mm -hmm. and a totally functional compressor. It's a little loud, but it's one of the blue motorized compressors. Mm. And every time I, I take it out of the box, I have to chase spiders out of it. Or occasionally, I think the last time I plugged it in, uh, it started up and I literally had a spider like ah! run out of it. My room is so full of spiders right now. It's I mean, I like... live in a basement suite, right? Yeah. I, I've, I've tried to go through the mental process of recategorizing spiders from uh, kill on site to small fluffy animals that provide a useful service. I just put them outside because I, like, I can't smoosh them, but I, <laughs> I had the most alarming experience, like several in a row. The first mm -hmm. one was like, I may have told you about this one. I was sitting there like wearing nothing but a smile with the cat. <laughs> and I notice between my legs is a spider mm -hmm. and I wish I could have gotten a printout of my, like, psychological data. <laughs> because, like, it, it went up to the, like, oh, you know, we should probably react in a rational... No, no. just straight into lizard brain. Yeah. Oh, God, it's coming for us. Yeah, like, the accelerator... And I just went... I went... Bleh! <laughs> I made a noise and, like, flicked it away. Is that, like, uh, oh, what was the movie, uh, The uh, Art of Getting Ahead in... Oh, yeah, Getting Ahead in Advertising? Yeah, Getting Ahead in Advertising, where the I main character... Handsome. Yeah, the main character notices like this. Wakes up one morning, goes into the bathroom, and has this enormous. That scene is so good. Like, it it looks like a tumor at first, but it has a face. Yeah, and it it, it winks at him and and says, "Hi, you handsome." And he just has this like psychic meltdown. Yeah. Where he goes into slow motion and just starts flailing. In this like primal, just like terror. Yeah. Apoplexia. <laughs> um. The other one mm -hmm. was I went into my room and I saw this giant wolf spider. Yeah. Um, and again, I, you know, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I was like, help. <laughs> like where, where your and first like, reflex is to try to following negotiate it with the spider. And, and like I lost track of it and then found it again. And then, you know, we got the mm -hmm. container and that was, that was wild. <laughs> Spiders. I don't, I don't have anything morally against them. I just no, don't want I, them near yeah, me. Yeah, I, 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 it's one of those things where your reaction to a spider 
uh, contrasted with your reaction to say like a tiger really makes you wonder how we made it this far. Because one of these things uh, kills pests in your home. Mm -hmm. And another one of these things kills you. Yeah. But one of them is cute yeah. and one of them is horrifying. Yeah. I don't know. There was, um, it's funny, there was a, uh, when I was taking the special effects course, uh, the supervisor mentioned something very similar. Where, like, if you go like this with an elastic band, people mm -hmm. would be like, no. Mm -hmm. The same people will go up to a, like uh, a structural cable and be like, "Oh, cool!" Right. And it's the same thing, except right. one of those would just like section you. <laughs> right. Yeah. If it let go. <laughs> I saw uh. um, on Netflix. There's a series called I think it's like the Seven Wonders of the Industrial World, mm -hmm. and one of them is the Brooklyn Bridge. Right. And they found out partway through construction that the uh, steel cable suppliers were duping them. Uh-oh. Where they were, <laughs> they were rolling around some good steel cable, having it inspected, driving it around the corner, unloading it, and put re putting rejected cable on it and sending it to the site. And so it was halfway through construction, and they were just like, okay, we can't fix this like we mm -hmm. can't pull it all out and start again right because so, it's structural so it will have to be four times stronger than it needs to be instead of six. Oh, okay because they they, oh. <laughs> they they built in a a, a, a magnitude of safety right. of six times huh and by their calculations even with the, the shitty cable uh it was going to be four times as strong as it needed to be okay but <laughs> I imagine that guy probably got tarred and feathered or flogged or whatever. Sued. Sued. Did they do suing? Probably. Maybe. I, I think mean, that... I, that's the kind of thing where you hope, like, oh, I, I hope they face consequences for that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember when the Brooklyn Bridge was, that was actually made. Like, it's quite old. Yeah, it's like mid-19th century. Wouldn't Something it? Mid, like that. Mid-late 19th century? Yeah, they, they talk about um, uh, the workers getting casement sickness oh like the bins really they they had no idea how okay so this is oh, really wait, i think julie told me about this she might have watched the same series and she said yeah the designer it's so of the, good or the the arc the engineer in charge of it got the bins like three times yeah because they had to sink these piles in mm -hmm. to, to put the bridge on top of and to work down at that depth they had to pump in compressed air to keep the space open right <clears throat> and they had these weird like people would develop these weird symptoms that they couldn't figure out when they mm -hmm. they ascended. Yeah. Where they would just like get sick and all fucked up and you know they just had a bad time. Right. And the further down they went the worse it got. And they had no idea what it was. But yeah, right. they were just getting decompression sickness. Oh. <laughs> just pretty bad. Whew. Yeah, if you haven't watched that series it's really great because Yeah, like there's the way it's done is mm -hmm. um it's it's reenacted mm -hmm. and it's done in the style of a documentary. Okay. Where they have like interviews with pe with people reenacting um, key figures of okay of the era, giving testimonials as if they were actually there at the time being oh, interviewed. Oh, okay, neat, neat. And then they show like recreations of like work on the project and you know mm -hmm. you know the sort of legal hurdles and processes and like it's really amazing human drama. And, like, I, the production is... I think I've seen about half of the one that was about uh, the London sewer system. Yeah, that was... Where it keeps getting rejected and rejected and rejected, and they're, like... Eventually, they're like, okay, you rejected this plan. What about this plan? And they're like, oh, that one looks good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, important. And, like, they... <sighs> that was the one where they, they, they figured out... Um, what was making everybody sick? It wasn't, was it cholera? No. I mean, probably cholera? Maybe typhoid? I don't know. It was something like that. There was like a, they, they found out that there was this like water pump that people were getting water from and they were getting super sick off of it. Huh. Because it was full of poop. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would do it. It's when they it's like, they started listening to the crazy weird guy who was <laughs> going like, maybe we shouldn't poop in the place we're drinking. <laughs> oh yeah, people were like, ah, oh, it sounds like fake news. Yeah. Yep. 
you know, it just I, adds roughage to the water. Yeah, it's, yeah. Fine. it's fine. I shit where I eat, and I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. Oh, weird! A tooth fell out. <laughs> right? Like there was the there was oh, that. Oh yeah, said uh, uh, Sudoku Sajuka Shet uh, points out that uh, the, Julie was really interested in that one because it used a lot of they were using a lot of stats to find uh, uh, um, places where people were getting sick. Yeah. And then isolating the causes, and that's kind of what Julie is yeah, interested in. In yeah, there, there's a famous the, the, that was one of the first cases where they were able to. There's uh, a famous um, uh, uh, I forget who it was, but. There's a, fam a, a famous um, uh, female nurse or doctor or, or something that 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 uh, actually checked, actually found out, you know, all the things and mapped them and realized that they were all concentrated around these wells hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> Love the taste of cholera in the morning. Oh, well, that's just stomach turning. Yeah, it's pretty pretty bad. Somebody brought up Fossey Jaw. <laughs> Which is not a good... I had no idea. You ever want to see, like, something more frightening than the scariest horror movie you've ever seen? Well, yeah. Look up... Don't actually, but, like, Fossey Jaw and, like, Syphilis Victims. I... <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, Guillermo del Toro hasn't, uh, mm. hasn't gotten into this stuff, because it's messed up. Mm. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> so we've come a long way. Yeah, good, good. Okay, you know, yeah, not, we're all not, good. Not pooping in our drinking water. Yeah. It's important. Ugh. It's important work. Ugh. Ugh. God. Ugh. Ugh. Safety standards. And then people <sighs> circumventing the safety standards and then becoming more strict because they're just like, these exist for a reason. Yeah. You dumbass. Peel back regulations. It'll make things more efficient. So like, oh, it's costing us a lot of money. Yeah. 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 You it know, won't... you're getting in exchange for that money? Safety. Yeah. It's like, well, you, you, the, the safety measures cost money, but wait till you see how expensive it is to not have them. Yeah, actually. Right. I mean, it's... It, it is always that problem where it's like, you know, with any, with any of safety measures is that if the safety measure is too effective... Mm -hmm. Everyone is like, well, that's not a thing that happens. Yeah, that, that would never <laughs> the, Measles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's you, like, no, it's just that it doesn't happen because we fixed it, because yeah. we're doing the safety thing. Mm. Now, did I show you some of those um, safety videos I was watching? No. It was like a series of um, like CGI uh, videos, um, chronolo uh, like, or um, depicting... Uh, industrial accidents and like going mm -hmm. through exactly like the steps that occurred oh, to Oh wait, you, know, you showed me one of these where they yeah. were welding on a turpentine tank. Yeah, that right? they thought at was a pulp mill. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't it wasn't it was it had been drained but not ventilated. Something like that. So it was full of fumes. Yeah, it's it's wild. Like the the amount of like content that's made for sort of internal um, mm. memos that most people don't see because you wouldn't think to look for it. it was right. Fascinating stuff. Like there was. Well, yeah. Also the, the the things that happen to people when they trust other people yeah. to do their job, right? There was uh, the one where um, there was a uh, a storage site for organic peroxide uh, during I think it was Hurricane Katrina, mm -hmm. and th it started flooding. Yeah. Very slowly but surely, and they kept going through this process of like trying to move it into refrigeration because it. It's fine mm -hmm. as long as it stays cold. If it gets up to room temperature, it yeah, it ignites. starts ev evolving yeah. oxygen. Well, yeah, it decomposes and then like, yeah, and like they, you know, they move the trucks and then like started moving you know, containers of it with the forklift. The forklift broke down. Then you know they ran out of power. The you know generators broke, and eventually just like everything got fucked. And you know they're mm. just like, well, I guess it'll burn. <laughs> yeah. This is wild. Actually, the horrible... There's this awful one where um, this guy was coming to resupply a plant. I think it was with sulfuric acid or something. Yeah. And there was two nozzles that looked the same. Uh-oh. And he got the wrong one. Yeah, I think he might have made chlorine gas. Like, a lot of it. So, with sulfuric acid? It was either sulfuric or hydrochloric. It would have been into, hydrochloric acid. It went into, into a tank of something. Yeah. And they're just like... It was bad. Yeah, that would be bad. 
Yeah, that would be real bad. Especially like also this... putting putting hydrochloric acid through pipes that aren't maybe good for hydrochloric acid would be. Uh, but yeah, they they talk about the, the... the last thing those pipes would carry. Yeah, they talk about the the sort of um, investigation process afterwards, mm. and they show photos, and they're just like, you know, they were right next to each other, not labeled. They had the same locking mechanism. Yeah, and you know, like it was one of those things where it's just like. The one guy thought he had directed him to the correct one. The other guy thought he had, you know, right. directed him. Every, everyone uh, thought that everyone thought that they were well understood. Yeah. Right. It was yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, the yeah the 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 CGI is always kind of amusing because it's like just a little bit under animated. Hmm. Oh yeah yeah for the humans. Yeah. You have people like. You know, doing a lot of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These big, like, noxious clouds of death. <laughs> uh, uh, good times. So, shall we move on to mine? Sure. Okay. Just flip. Uh, what I wanted to bring was... I, I was struggling with this for a while. I'm actually going like, to put this over. I yeah. talk about myself endlessly. Do um, you? Yeah, kind of. On stream, basically. When oh, I'm well. just, like, bored and, you know, I'll tell the same anecdote uh, for, like, six years in a row. Um, so I was looking around my apartment and realized I don't really have a whole lot that I haven't already told people about. And then I realized that if I have something um, that I just don't see because it's it's ever present for me. Right. Uh, and that is my briefcase. Oh boy, I want one of these. Isn't isn't this is very pretty? This was a gift I gave to myself when I went back to school. Um, this is a saddleback leather extra-large cappuccino-colored briefcase. What kind of cappuccino are you getting, my dude? I don't know. I guess it's... Or espresso color, okay, I guess. Um, so this is one I got for slightly cheaper because it uh, was uh, uh, discounted because the back of it, one of the panels has ripples in the... You can see them. But there's two leather leather uh, panels here so... and the glue was misapplied I guess or huh. one of them shrunk and the other one did not huh. so you wind up with this interesting texture um, I mean it looks deliberate yeah I quite like it I haven't treated this in a couple of months I need to uh, what you do is you take it and you rub it down with um, uh, uh, mink oil mm. synthetic mink oil you know, this is a perfect example of uh, something that I'm very gradually waking up to, which is like, um, buy once. Yeah, uh, I mean, the saddleback leathers tagline is you, your grandchildren will fight over it. Probably, yeah. Um, and I've popped a couple of seams on it. Like here, there's one seam that's popped um, and I need to get it repaired, but that's the kind of thing that you can repair, right? Uh, so let's go into what I carry in it because Ooh. I I carry this with me a lot of places. This is and now I, an EDC. Th uh, yeah, this is yeah. We're now in EDC territory. Everyday carry. What um, what, what kind of knife do you carry with you all the time? <laughs> I'll, I'll I, go next. I I do not carry a knife with me, uh, <laughs> but we'll go into what I what the things I carry with me and where they all came from. So two main compartments in here. Um, so let's go into it. Let's unbox my bag. In it, the major thing I carry around with me is my laptop. It is a MacBook Air. You know, I thought these were really stupid when I first saw them, and now I definitely understand the appeal. Yeah, the appeal. I think if well, I was... Because they're teeny. Yeah, they're easy to carry, and uh, I got... My first MacBook Air I got, again, when I went back to school, because all I needed to do was um, operate Word, Excel, Chrome, and eventually terminal. Yeah. Right, go into terminal so I can do, so I can use VI or Emacs mm. uh, and get my coding done there. And then um, this is actually my second MacBook Air, which came from Graham when he upgrade, updated his own laptop mm. to do more editing on. This one uh, became available and I wound up with it. So yeah. it's, you know, it's a totally fine little MacBook 13, yeah. right? So uh, it's interesting somebody pointed out that, you know, um, you can't really fix these. Yeah. But that's a trade-off. Yeah. Because I don't think you get this kind of size. 
Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I like this is, device. Yeah. It, it works well. Um, I like Macs. I, I, like, I like Apple's laptops. Mm. I use a PC at home. Um, but this has the advantage of just terminal is right there, and it lets me do Unix stuff. Because Mac o or OS X is based on BSD, and BSD mm -hmm. can you know, do all the Unix shit that I need to do when I'm working on a cluster. Mm. Or when I worked on a cluster. Doing I don't do that anymore. Doing science stuff. Yeah, when I'm doing science uh, stuff. Soon, again. I hope it's, so. You can do it. It's, <laughs> it's weird that for various historical or for various like company reasons that the MacBook Air is now not, it's now like the mid-range, not the smallest. Like the, the, yeah. new, the new MacBooks are both thinner and with less ports even. The mm -hmm. MacBook Air. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of the ones that don't like have a separate USB that, port. That it's just and all it, one port. Yeah, yeah, I don't like those at all. I'm, I mean, yeah. I, I I'm not a Ma Apple fanboy, but I like this device mm. because yeah, it yeah. did exactly what I wanted in a I've sleep package that was, you know, relatively yeah. sturdy. I've definitely come down to the same kind of destination as you have. I used to be an Apple fanboy, mm -hmm. and then I was like, wait, this is stupid. Why would I swear allegiance to one platform or the other? Like. They both, you know, in the binary that is like Mac versus PC, um, they both have their utility. Yeah. And they do different things, and that's fine. Yeah. I have both at home. I like both. Um, they do different stuff in different ways. Like, my feeling with Apple is that you pay a premium for uh, just something that's just going to do work. Yeah, hopefully you're, work. you're going to get to work, like, you're going to get to the work straight away and just mm -hmm. do it. And you will potentially rob yourself of some options, but those might not be options that you need or want or care about. Yeah, exactly. I will I will happily tinker away on my gaming PC at home. Exactly. I don't need to tinker on my laptop. I need it to uh, read papers on. I need it to enter data into spreadsheets when I'm in the lab. And I need it to write lab reports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, and I need I I need a, a text <laughs> a text editor to write code on. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I need you for. Uh, I think I have Steam on here. Mm. I don't have any games installed. This, that's not what this is for, and it fulfills those functions quite nicely. I yeah. think. Um, I like Quick Look. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, oh, then I've got. Okay, the other thing that I kept thinking of when I was thinking of this segment is that there's a wonderful uh, William Gibson book called Count Zero. Mm -hmm. And in Count Zero, there is a character, the main character, his name is Marley. She runs a gallery in Paris, in science fiction Paris. And uh, her gallery, she comes into personal ruin because her gallery was found to be showing um, uh, fakes. Ooh. And the fakes were sourced to her by her boyfriend, Elaine. And as the book starts, Marley is ruined, um, and she's in tough times, and Elaine is gone. Um, and at some point, Elaine winds up back in the story. Spoilers for this 30-year-old novel. Um, he winds up dead. She finds him. She's supposed to go meet him somewhere because he's got information on something that she needs mm -hmm. to find. He's dead, and she finds his briefcase. And in the brief briefcase, it goes through in detail, like, you know, he has a fashionable novel. Uh, with a that has never been read, he has a notebook that has never been written in. He's got a pack of cigarettes uh, that is empty, right? Like he, Elaine is clearly like a poser, right? He's wow. he's a complete fake, right? He's carrying around the fashionable novel. He's carrying around the nice notebook, but he doesn't use any of these things. Wow. And I'm thinking about these being like, God, I hope that isn't me. Mm. Anyway, uh, so I have the book I'm currently reading. W.G. Sebald's The Rings of Saturn, which is a book about, you know, a, uh, it's a nonfiction book about a uh, German gentleman in, who is going around doing a walking tour of the southern, uh, southern England. It's from about 1990. You know, it's full of, um, it's one of those books that's just full of, you know, amusing anecdotes of wandering around um, uh, kind of pre-EU England. Hmm. Um, Sounds fascinating. Yeah, so he comes to a lot of like fishing villages that are you know ruined because nobody can fish up anything that doesn't that isn't full of tumors and like <laughs> crude oil from the North Sea. Uh, right. That's uh, awkward. Yeah, you know another another case for regulations. Uh, Hi, Jeej. Hey, Jeej. Um, so you know this is fun. I've been reading this. Uh, it's, it's turned up in a lot of people's 
feeds lately. Mm. It, it has suddenly become fashionable to read The Rings of Saturn. I don't know why, but I picked up on it because I'm nothing if not a weather vane. I mean, like, did Oprah recommend it? No. Didn't think no. so. Um, <laughs> hey, Ajij. Uh, I also have a notebook. Mm. Current. This one is brand new. I filled up my last one. Uh, this is a Claire Fontaine just little A4 notebook um, lined. Is Julie got me a stack of these for, for my birthday. I really like the quality of paper. It it feels nice, I you know? Have, I have a real appreciation for lined notepads, even though I have just about zero use for them. Yeah, get that a feel, though. It, uh, it takes fountain, fountain pen ink really well, because I also am one of those people who carries Ooh. multiple fountain pens. Oh, yeah. Uh, but let's keep... So I've got this uh, Tuesby Vax 700 uh, fountain pen with an extra fine nib. Uh, it is a clear demonstrator fountain pen, mm -hmm. which means that the inkwell is made of clear plastic, so you can see through to it. That's really, really there cool. So you can see the bubble moving, hopefully. I'm definitely going to have to compare my pens to yours when I take... Mm. <laughs> see, I want to have a turn next after you're done with all this stuff. Uh, and it is filled with Sailor Nano Blue ink, which is not a dye-based ink, but a nanoparticle-based ink. It's like India ink, only blue and much, 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 much finer. Sailor Nano was only in the Japanese release, wasn't it? Uh, well, it is a Japanese ink, actually. <laughs> wow! Now I just played myself. Yep. Uh, then I've also got this Lamy All Star Extra Fine fountain pen that is filled with um, a amber colored ink. Is that aluminum body? Yeah, it is. God, I, I, have, I have uh, such a weakness for like anodized aluminum. Yep. It's, yeah. Um, so Lamy also makes a uh, line of pens that look a that look identical to this, but they have a plastic body called the Safari, and they're, you know, about 20 bucks cheaper. Mm. But I like aluminum because I like, I like the feel. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is my first fountain pen. These are really sweet pens that I don't think I could ever use because my handwriting is shit. Mm. I've, I, uh, whenever I post a picture of, like, a poem or something that I've transcribed, uh, a lot of people comment on my handwriting, and... My handwriting was always fine in elementary school. There were definitely a lot of people with better handwriting than mine because I'm exactly old enough that I had classes on handwriting where you could fail and be forced to redo the same thing over and over again. Holy shit. Like the, the, the top of your majuscule letters had to top the top of the line and the minuscule letters had to fill the entire midline, the dotted line through the middle of the lined paper. Do they still teach joined up writing in school? I don't know if they do or not. I imagine it depends on a lot of school, but I've heard it's a dying art, which seems strange to me. Because, well, like, um, the thing English, is, it's like, only useful for signatures now. Yeah, but, I mean, it, it's still useful. Wow. I mean, it's, um, uh, 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 like, English open hand or copper plate or whatever you want to call that style of handwriting, mm -hmm. the, which is the one that I was taught, is, I mean, it's still useful. Right? I mean, I still wrote a lot of notes by hand. Um, I think we yeah. all have to write things down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is faster than just like individual letters. Yeah, yeah. I, I never, I was, I never got to the point where writing in cursive was faster than just writing in in, you know, printing or whatever. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Normal thing. So it was always very frustrating to me because. I was assured on multiple occasions that the reason why I was spending all this effort was because it was faster. Yeah. And I was just like, it's not, though. <laughs> well, I, I think it's also more uniform. Uh, right, right. Like, you can look at, if everyone is taught the same style of handwriting, then you can kind of read anyone's handwriting. Whereas if everyone is kind of trying to evolve their own form of handwriting, mm -hmm. then there's no guarantee that you'll be able to read anything anyone yeah. else has ever written down. I think I mean cursive writing can is mm. can get the word like there's way more because it it gives you complete license to join all your letters together. Mm -hmm. So that's where you end up with the just you know a line with a few bumps in it. Is, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know the doctor handwriting kind of thing. Mm. Hmm. Um, so those are 
like the reason I converged on or selected this ink, the Sailor Nano Nano Blue ink, is because I'm left-handed. And this ink dries very quickly and dries indelibly. So the problem that you might have if you're left-handed, and that may not occur to you if you're right-handed, is that we in English write left to right, mm -hmm. which means if you're left-handed, you are constantly dragging your hand across what you have just written. And uh, this is a big problem if your ink does not dry quickly, uh -huh. or if your graphite in your pencil is soft. So normal HB graphite oh, in a pencil boy smears so and you wind up uh you can probably find pictures of people just being like so this is my hand and it's just gray and metallic with graphite i wonder if left-handed people have an easier time in asian countries i don't know because they write the opposite direction i, I mean arabic like, is also written right to left it's right? also top to bottom yeah maybe maybe that's more agnostic well maybe. right i mean you mm. wouldn't be dragging your hand through it because your hand would be over here or over here, so that might give give the ink enough time to settle into the paper. Uh, hmm. But that's also the reason why I use two... Okay, this is a story I may have told many times before, but I use a two millimeter graphite holder as a pencil. Oh it, man, that, it looks, is so, a that looks so mil-spec. Yeah, it's a Rotring 600 um, graphite holder. Um, it's got an aluminum body. This is another thing that I have a weakness it's for, Cam. It's knurling. It's mm. not a pencil. Yes, it's not a pen. It's not a pencil. It is a graphite holder. Uh, yeah, and it's got like this knurled grip at the top. It's finished in kind of like this, sem this satin black. It's, it's, in, a, in a certain way of looking at things, you're, you yourself are a graphite holder. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, good point. Uh, kind of like how uh, corn is the dominant organism on Earth Yeah. <laughs> from a certain perspective. Have you seen how knurling is done? No. It's like in a lathe, there's mm -hmm. like a knurling die, I want to say. Yeah. It's just like, I can't even follow how it works. It just sort of like winds its way on and huh. back. I think it's a little bit like tapping. Hmm. <clears throat> cool. Well, yes. And if you're not familiar with knurling, knurling, Knurl. it is this textured finish on the, on, on the grip, uh, the diamond shaped pattern on the grip where your hand would. Mm. Hold mm -mm -mm. on, hold on. Can I? I? Oh, oh, that. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, that's my fingernail across the knurling. Um, so I use this because when I used a pencil, most mechanical pencils are 0.5 mil HB. Yeah, it's 0.5 or 0.7. Yeah, point, occasionally you'll find a 0.7, occasionally you'll find 0.3. Um, and what I found was with HB graphite, um, I would smear that with my hand. Oy, oy, oy. So I went to harder and harder graphites. The problem with harder and harder graphites is even though they don't smear, you must push harder with them mm. in order to make uh, leave um, a legible mark. Um, it's kind of like scribing with an eye beam, right? When you get down to like 4H graphite, just like, right? Where get... you're actually just kind of leaving an indent in the paper rather than a mark. You give up on paper and just use like pressed sheets of copper and like a tungsten stylus yeah yeah it's like um you know in the roman baths in bath in bath. england you will find like uh there, there will still be like lead sheets in the bottom of the of the baths that were thrown there as like offerings to pluto <laughs> i think there's quite a famous one where it's like this person wrote this like letter to pluto essentially in a lead sheet scribed dear. with this thing being like <laughs> dear pluto please curse the man who stole my new red cloak is basically the gist of it that's really right? funny that's um, like that um bof. uh there's that tablet mm -hmm. from where the hell is it from it's very very oh, very is it the sumerian yeah, uh, the complaint the about sumerian the quality complaint. of copper yeah where somebody just like made this tablet's like your delivery of copper was shit, you dumbass. Yeah, and when I sent my messenger to you to get my refund, you were rude to them. <laughs> and let me fucking tell you, you were never doing business in the city again. Everyone is going to know you're... It was like the first one-star Yelp review of a copper supplier. And I, it, it is... <laughs> the fury is righteous. Oh, that's Oh, good. it's hateful. I'm sure somebody can put it on in chat. 
I like um, that, that, that regardless of the effect at the time, uh, that guy's bad review has yes. literally gone down in history. Yeah. Like, all we know, we know nothing about that copper supplier. All we, we know, know is, is that they he, were terrible. Yeah, <laughs> is that he done fucked up. Yeah. Um, so, so I wound up using 2H graphite so mm -hmm. that my hand didn't smear it. Okay, we're good. But because you're pushing harder, um, you're applying a lot more pressure mm -hmm. to the graphite across this very kind of like small mm -hmm. surface point. So you would be writing and then snap, click, 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 write again, snap, snap it again. off again, click, 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 snap it off. Now I'm out of graphite. And I found with a two mil graphite, two millimeter, like this log of graphite, mm -hmm. um, it, is, it is tough enough that I no longer have that problem. Nice. And so that is how I converged on a two mil graph the graphite holder rather than a mechanical pencil. See, this is kind of a classic example of why asking what the best X, Y, Z is, is kind of a futile. Yeah, because everyone you know, kind of finds their own solutions. Yeah. Um, next up in my EDC is <laughs> nothing terribly interesting here. This is a bag full of cables. These are all charging cables. It's a nice bag though. Yeah. It, so these are the cables for my for my for my laptop, and Pretty you can good tell. Shape. How do you how do you know that I'm a person who deals with cables a lot? Well, it's very dirty, but you you deal with cables a lot, but you deal with them well. Yeah. Because this isn't frayed all the shit. Yeah. This, you will see a lot of a lot of these chargers where oh uh, they have a bad where they time. take them they take the cable and they wrap it as tightly as humanly possible Just... around the brick. <laughs> um, Man, Apple products are so badly made. <laughs> yeah. And what you do is you don't you don't do that. What you do is you take the cable, and you 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 commune with it, <laughs> right? You find out where it wants to go, <laughs> right? And you can maybe give it a little more room, and you do the over under. Put a little half turn into it. See, it's comfy. Yeah. It's happier there. There was who who was it during at the end of uh, Desert Bus like the last Desert Bus uh, that Johnny or somebody just literally threw out his power cable it was mm -hmm. just like I'm throwing this out it is dangerous to have it in the office because it's like frayed all the hell right it will cause a fire yeah I'll buy you a new one <laughs> <laughs> when, yeah any, fair anytime I see somebody because I used to work in uh, show production. Anytime I see somebody wind a cable like over their arm like that, like mm -hmm. I get this frisson. <laughs> I was like, oh. well, I remember we were watching like a YouTube video of some random army derper uh, <laughs> doing maintenance on like an Apache helicopter. Oh no! And uh, at one point he plugs like the the helicopter is crude and it's idling, and he's running up to it. And the first thing he does is he plugs in this cable into the side of this utility panel. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure we knew what it was. My guess was that it was a grounding cable because the rotors probably put out a lot of static electricity, mm -hmm. but it might have also just been like a, a, a direct communication line to the crew mm -hmm. or some kind of lockout. But, you know, he, he finishes whatever he's doing and he pulls the cable out and he does this with it where he wraps it around his arm as quickly as possible and we're like... <laughs> you can just hear the money signs like coming off it. This guy just loaded a bunch of 30 millimeter. <laughs> yeah, and he does... This is how he treats his cables. <laughs> Uh, so, and then I just carry it around in this, uh, little, I carry around my cables in this bag. These are, uh, old, an old headphone bag. They, they were The bags that come with head headphones are surprisingly good. Yeah, these, this was for my old TMA1 headphones. They were nice little headphones, but I got new ones. I got Sennheisers. So, I have no more use for this as a bag to carry around headphones. Um... And then finally, the last thing I have in here, because I have culled this over over the last couple of years. Oh, I've got an eraser as well. It's my pencil case. Mm. Um, so this is a oh god. I don't even know how to how to pronounce it. Lahit Labs, Layit Labs, L H A I T Labs Ugh. pencil case. Um mm. And it has a bunch of stuff in it. Like, I have... Your standard issue Mars Lumograph kit. Yeah, Mars Lumograph pencils. Staedlers are good. Yeah. 
Um, oh, and this is my ticket from the last time I went to life drawing. So I've got like, you know, your standard 7B to uh, uh, 2B or HB uh, pencils Does in here. Does have like a, a pencil where like you just turn it and it flows like tar? <laughs> yeah. It's just, the, it's it's just so, so soft. soft. Uh, well, I mean, that's what this is for. This is actual charcoal. One of the oldest, one of the older artists. Uh, at life drawing, um, just had like a box of charcoal sticks. First. One day he's like, you want to give these a shot? I'm like, sure. And I was like drawing with it and then went, <gasps> and it all went away. <laughs> like it's yeah. so light. It's yeah, like it's... actual charcoal is so light. And then I've got a, a piece of Conte here, which is uh, like charcoal, but it's mixed with wax. So it's got more staying powder. Conte is super cool. Yeah, Conte is really nice. Like for sketching, it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, it's nice. Then I have two older graphite holders here. These are, again, I think these are just Mars uh, Lumograph um, or Stadler. Yeah. Stadler graphite holders. They're plastic. They were like five bucks each, but I used them for years and they were really good. I've got uh, the lid on this has come off. That's awkward. This is graphite reloads. Two mil graphite. Standard two mil <laughs> armor piercing caseless. Uh, a little pencil sharpener. Uh, this over here is my Science. physics lab kit because I'm sure anyone who has listened to me rabbit on Ooh. for years has heard the stories about my my second year physics prof who had to teach undergrads how to do assignments properly uh -huh. and how to draw their diagrams properly and how to um, submit correct looking uh, proofs and uh, solutions for for problems and his big thing was that um, diagrams are drawn to scale they are drawn with a compass circles are drawn with a compass all angles are correct um, forces are in blue accelerations are in red vectors are in green mm -hmm. and solutions to problems are double underlined with a ruler if they are not double underlined with a ruler there is no solution and then you will receive zero. Whoa! If your circles are not drawn with a compass, they are not a circle. Therefore, your diagram receives zero. And uh, like everyone was like, oh, this is scary. But he was honestly like, uh, Dr. Tatum was this really, really nice guy. And he had this wonderful like anecdote for explaining why this was. Because he realized that we were, you know, may maybe thought that this was unfair. And this was a bit strict. And he acknowledged that, yes, this is very strict. And the reason that he does this is because we are being trained to produce publishable quality um, materials. And he wanted us to get into the habit of just producing them as a matter of course, because any one of our, our solutions or any one of our assignments is you know not interesting or novel, but if he submitted it to a publication, their complaint should not be, this is unreadable garbage, <laughs> right? That, that should never be anyone's response to any of our papers. And he yeah. said, so, you know, over the years, um, uh, the scientific community has converged on this format as being what it will look like. And that is overseen by a body called the International Astronomical Union mm -hmm. um, and uh, is regulated by a body at that union called Committee 14 or Committee 13. Um, and he said, and you might wonder who sits on that committee. And he said, I do. <laughs> so if you're wondering why you have to submit your papers in such a way, it's because I said so. <laughs> because you have to. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so you're the real deal. That's cool. That, that is was, cool. That was honestly pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, And so I still carry these with me. Um, then I have... Darkness. Yeah, this is opening up the black bag. This is a, this is a Ziploc sandwich bag, by the way, that has... A graphite pointer mm. in it. So what you do is you take this and you extend the graphite down into one of these holes, which are measured out in such a way. Oh, is that what those are for? Yeah, they're deep enough so that you extend the correct amount of graphite out. Yo. And then you sharpen it. Because again... Oh, and then the best part. Yeah. You stick it into the cigarette filter. Yeah, you stick it into the cigarette filter. Like, that's just what that is, right? Yeah, it's a cigarette filter. 
It's not literally a cigarette filter. It, you it? can replace them with cigarette no filters. No shit. They're the right size. I was half joking. No, yeah, it's it's li you can use a cigarette filter to refill this. Yo. So that's how you sharpen it. And then uh, every once in a while you take it and empty the um, the graphite out of it because what a again there's a marvelously an, simple machine. Yeah, there's another knurled steel cylinder at the bottom of this, if you can see that, that the pencil is um, that the graphite extends angled against a certain distance through this piece. It goes in here, sticks out there, and then you sur you rotate it, and it abrades away graphite. Uh, and then you wind up with your hands blackened. Nice. But lubricated. Graphite's a lubricant mm -hmm. in atmosphere. Turns out NASA found out that uh, um, graphite is not a lubricant in space. Oh, it's not the graphite no. that, it's not the le well I don't know if NASA figured it out somebody figured it out that we shouldn't use graphite in space one because it's conductive and it gets everywhere but two because it actually doesn't work uh, graphite traps water molecules and then rolls around them uh, but graphite normally together sticks in big sheets of graphite wow. like the sheets of graphite just like stack on top of each other doesn't work yeah, graphite is absolutely a lubricant. It's a dry lube. What, yeah. what would you use it for typically? Uh, like, uh, God, what? Like did it's we a use mechanical it for? lubricant. I think my dad used it for like model trains and shit. Mm. Right. Uh, although aluminum is also self-lubricating, isn't it? Is it? I want to say. Hmm. Um, yeah, any kind of like small mechanical stuff. Uh, then I have a uh, a red Signo pen. This is what I would use to um, indicate vectors. You can tell <laughs> or no, accelerations. Serious, because like all the ink has been used up. Yeah, although I think this one might be dry. This is a uh, 0.28 ultra fine Signo ballpoint pen. Then I have two Stadler uh, permanent markers. My dad used to use these all the time. I can't stand the smell though. Fine and micro, or fine and medium. If you find me at a convention, I might sign your stuff using these. They're they're really good. Like they're, yeah, they're, they're handy. permanent. Yeah, I had a prof who did all of her notes on an overhead, like all of her lecture notes, would oh, be yeah. on an overhead uh, using these. She would just write and she would draw these gorgeous uh, organic chemistry diagrams with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the only people who still do uh, wet erase stuff. Really? Rather, rather than like dry, you know, like dry right. erase for for. Um, for like whiteboards and stuff, but Stadler also does wet erase mm -hmm. things for for like overlays or for like projectors and that kind of stuff where mm. it's it's permanent until you actually get it wet, so you can't rub it off with your hand. Hmm. Uh, and then I have four Coptic Copic multi-liner pens, ranging in uh, thickness from well, I've got a point two. These are refillable, so you might see these normally like. The pseudo disposable ones that have mm -hmm. the beige body, these are aluminum mm. because I'm a fancy boy. Mm. I'm a very fancy man. So this one is 0.2. This one is 0.1. This one is 0.05. And this one is 0.03. I should really try these. It's kind of surprising that I've not tried the Copic multi liners yet. They're, they're really nice. You can refill them with ink. I generally uh, and they they last a long time. Yeah, well, the thing is, that I don't generally do um, single line weight uh, hmm. stuff, which I'm hoping I will be able to show you. Ooh, because I kind of want to do this now. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Um, and you can tell these are all like I use these a lot in school. I don't use I don't have much opportunity to use them anymore. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll want to like draw a diagram or do some very fine like lining on like a character sheet for a role-playing game. Mm. But uh, these are all covered in, everything here is covered in graphite. Um, it's a and I remember taking these to class one day and everyone's like, your pens are kind of fucked up. And I'm like, yeah, they're covered in graphite. And we spent kind of like an afternoon putting them in like sonicators uh, and rubbing them with like, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, ethanol or, you know, propanol, trying to get the graphite off. And one of my friends was like, you're all fucking stupid. <laughs> How do you get graphite off something? And we're like, I don't know, we've been trying to figure it out. And it's like, mechanical force. Huh? Eraser. So, <laughs> when chemistry nerds get way into the weeds on something, it's terrible. Holy shit. 
Oh. Right, you've just wasted your afternoons doing you this. You got... Yeah, we got owned, right? Like you, you got owned. What, what, like, congratulations, you played yourself. It's just like the... The, the only way that could have gone better is if they had underhanded an eraser and it had bounced off your forehead. Yeah, and landed in. You would have been... Or I would have been like, ow, why'd you do that? <laughs> or you just, like, duck your head to go ow and you just see this incoming knee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That's how... That's one of the ways you get Cosmoline off. Oh, really? You erase it? You well, just no, rub not, it off? Not, you don't erase it, but like, there's three ways to get off because it's mm -hmm. a grease. Yeah. Um, there's mechanical force, mm -hmm. solvents, or heat. Okay, so you can like bake it off and it'll just... Yeah, like... seriously, like, I've seen videos where, you know, people take their SKS that they, you know, unissued, mm -hmm. bust it apart, put it on a baking tray, mm -hmm. put it in the oven and it goes... Huh. You know, it melts out in this puddle and then you can just like rub it off. Huh. Neat. I mean, you can also lick it off, but... I mean, when the Cosmoline is just right. Or what's the... What is that from, where the guy's like... It's some dude from an ad. Right. It just, like, feels good. I, I'm not sure. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, that was that's my show and tell. That's super cool. I think I might have to copy you now. Is it? Okay, you want to do, yeah. do EDC? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's, but, let's do it. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll wait till you pack up. But, okay. I mean, I'm um, going to keep this laid out here while you get your stuff. Oh, it's right here? Yeah. Oh, well, in that case. Like... All right. Everybody knows this son of a bitch. Because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> they hate it when I do that. Huh. This is the best water bottle I've ever owned. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it, you can find these in any store now. Because mm -hmm. they're just, just the, the aluminum, aluminum double-walled... It just, it stays cold for a lot longer mm. and stays hot for a lot longer than uh, you would think is uh, reasonable. I discovered drinking water a couple years ago. It's good. Yeah, it's like, it, it works. It sounds like a stupid thing that you see in some sort of like advice column or something. Yeah. It's like, honestly, drinking water is great. Yeah, drink water, dumbass. Yeah, turns out you're made out of it. Mm. <sighs> yeah, that's the stuff. The finish is flaking off, but meh. Mm. That just means it's been well loved. Mm. Um, so my bag is the Channel Fireball. <laughs> oh, this is the free swag bag from uh, GP Vegas. You're right, right, right. This is actually James's free swag bag from GP Vegas because mm -hmm. I wore mine out. Huh. And I liked it so much. Right. That I was that he had a spare that he never used. Mm hmm. And I was just like, can I have it? He's like, sure, why not? Um, so I kept it. It's just like a nice, comfortable canvas uh, messenger bag that I paid zero dollars for. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I like how it... Um, black is never black in no. clothes. Black, there's no such thing as a black dye for clothes. It's always super dark green, blue, or red, usually. Mm. Uh, and this one was red. You can tell because it. Um, yep. that's how it's weathered. Right, I assume that's UV. Probably damage to the dye. Maybe. From or being out in the sun. Could just be friction. Could could be rain, could be water. But that's why uh, washing black clothing is, is always a fraught practice. <laughs> that's right. Uh, let's see what's in the side pouches. Chargers with no cables. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. These are just like two charger bricks that I don't know where the cables are. They're probably at home. And on the other side, something much more useful. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, eight by twenty-two Optex, uh -huh. so, like binoculars. Mm. They're like not amazing binoculars, but they're nice and small, and they like useful hold together. Just if you want to spot something from a distance. Mm. I think I'd like to get some better binoculars, just to you know. Look at stuff. Although you do sort of look like a weirdo if you just like whip these out <laughs> at like a beach or something, or just trying to. I was during the shoot uh, mm -hmm. for Krog's List. Yeah, I went down to the beach and was like trying to find you guys, and I was like, I'm a dude <laughs> on a beach with binoculars. Oh God! <laughs> Thanks, cultural norms. Saving this one for later. Oh yeah. Uh, da -da -da. So this is. 
This is supposed to go with um, the decks tonight. This is my, oh. my token box. Oh, okay, cool. So the, the, you'll, see this, Liliana, you'll see this later tonight. Heretical this healer. is for two, two decks worth mm. of tokens. This is not normally in my, in my bag, but mm -hmm. it is today. It's a receipt for BC Shaver. Mm. BC Shaver Shop is the local model shop. They sell shavers still at the front. You, uh, this is where I go to buy my disposable razors for my yeah. barber pole. Oh, so good. And loose Sharpie. Mm -hmm. This thing. Your first aid kit? Yeah, this is... Th okay, so this was off of my um, uh, my chest rig. Okay. The um, For Airsoft. Oh, okay, yeah. And I, th I put a Canadian patch on it, and I just started carrying this around on its own. And I'm not going to show you everything that's in here, but mm -hmm. it's just like a medical kit. It has like a bag full of dergs, mm -hmm. useful dergs. Just like acetaminophen, ibuprofen. Yeah, it's got like backup antidepressants in it mm -hmm. um, in case I like Wind leave, up leave the house and, and I'm like, oh shit, I skipped a dose. Mm. Um, alcohol swabs. Um, I think there's triangle bandages. There's uh -huh. like... Um, oh, SPF? Or, uh, yeah. yeah, sunscreen. Little tiny bit of Purell. Purell. Any bug dope? No. Hmm. Because we don't really need it here, do we? Not no mosquitoes. Well, not many mosquitoes. Uh, gauze. Our mm. mosquitoes tend to be, like, very concentrated. Yeah. Like, yeah, there around... like, there aren't that many mosquitoes, like, just around, but if yeah. you go to certain places, you're yeah, like going to bog. Gonna have a bad time. Yeah. Toothbrush, toothpaste. Shockingly useful. <laughs> Not you in particular needing this, but this this is the cool part about this. Oh yeah, yeah. Travel, travel, toothbrush, yeah, toothpaste. Yeah, I, I pull this out when I go um, stay at other people's houses a mm. lot. So that's just super handy to have. Uh, my notebook mm -hmm. or sketchbook, as it were. Um, I've only just started this one, and I'm I've not still SFW. Uh, <laughs> we'll just show one page, okay? Because I I can't be held responsible for what's in here. Mm. Um, Neat. Yeah, I, I realize that like who, who I should I, be responsible. Well, for okay, what's shut in up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, y'all. Uh, oh wait, no. Here, okay, here's one that I can show you. Um, oh. A FUD, <laughs> a FUD is a, uh, it's internet uh, gun nerd slang for uh, a sports, yeah, a sports collector, basically. You don't need that. Yeah, you don't need that. All you need is a, you know, like, the, the, it's the. It's a FUD is Slav. Yeah. A Gopnik FUD. So, um, this, uh, I don't think it has any particular, um, uh, branding on it. This is just like, I like these moleskin. I used to ha use an eight and a half by 11 book, mm -hmm. um, which was turned out to be prohibitively huge. And yeah, then, yeah, they kind of dominate your entire yeah, bag, right? One year, my I think my dad got one of these in my Christmas stocking, mm -hmm. and this size is so perfect, because mm -hmm. um, it's like landscape right. ratio. It's not too big and it's not too small. I love it. Um, every book that I have, I put the same thing on the inside cover, which is low emission notepad, do not ingest. <laughs> Um, I only recently started dating my books, mm -hmm. which is frustrating because I have like three dozen undated uh, sketchbooks going right. back to the no like, idea dawn when. of time. Right, no idea where to look for things. So that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. You don't put like, if found, please, please give it back to me. Eh, not so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I should I mean, I'm assuming it. you wouldn't have shown like your phone number and address and so forth on the stream, but mm. no. I mean, I've accidentally uh, uh, doxed myself on stream a couple of times. Whoops. Usually buying something on Steam or on Mitgo, uh, where it flashes up your your, right, right, your, right. your billing address. Oops. Um, this was a gift from an old friend. Uh, mm. I, li I wow, like I, it. It's so nice. Like, it turned out very well as well. Like I've spent an inordinate amount of time working on the pack mm, for mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. I seem to be missing my pencil day. No, I put my pencil somewhere else. Where did it go? I, I took it out to point with it. You did. It might be with your model. 
Well, that would make sense. No, right? it's gone. I ate gone it. Gone forever? Well, right. anyways, I, ha I have a 2B pencil. Because hmm. um, the lead I sketch with is pretty soft. Right. Because it's just like making whatever kind of marks. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of what's in this kit uh, is a Tombow brush pen. Mm -hmm. These are super nice. Is it refillable? Nope. Okay. Unfortunately not. Uh, but like the, the um, uh, let me actually just show you real quick. You can sort of go very, very fine to... Mm. Yeah, brush pens are literally brush brushes or uh, developed as a pen. Yeah, it doesn't right? have bristles. Like, it's an mm -hmm. actual, like, felt. Right. Sort of, or but synthetic. But it's, it's pressure responsive. Yeah, which is really great. I had one of the... Uh, God, I forget who makes them. They're essentially disposable. Like, even the plastic is really soft. The body of mm -hmm. the plastic is really soft. I think they were on for $5 at, at Opus one day. Hmm. But they're the bigger ones with the... I, I used it for a bunch of, like, inking um, sketches that I had done. And it was nice. Faber-Castell M. Hmm. Uh, these are, I think, India ink. So they're they're pretty light, fast, and permanent. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to remember where these are from. These might be German? Hmm. Boop. Wait, can I draw a butt upside down? Sure. <laughs> it occurs to me that it, it, that's it, the it, same... I mean, upside down versus. Yeah, I guess our butts palindromic. <laughs> I mean, like the, if you turned it this way, it would look like the first two lines in the cover of um, uh, Joy Division's, um, you know, that album cover with the pulsar. Yeah. <laughs> eraser. A block eraser, which is my sort of preferred way of working, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't fit nicely in this kit. Mm. Um, but this, because it's the same dimensions as a pen, does. Right. Um, so it's not ideal, but, you know, you can get pretty precise with it and, mm. you know, just get your lines out. I usually use it for just, like, erasing um, uh, sketch lines. Mm. Um, this I'll have to show you in a second because I need a surface to do it on, and you'll see what I mean. Um, a series of Copic Chow pens. I'm not familiar with these. These are exactly the same as a regular Copic, mm -hmm. like say this one, um, but they are thinner. Right. Like they're just a little bit smaller because mm -hmm. like these are these are thick wide boys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and these are thinner. Um, same ink, same nibs. Uh, they're slightly less expensive, just as refillable. Mm -hmm. I got these because they fit in the kit better. Yeah. And they're also just like, you know, they handle nice because they're a little bit smaller. Mm. Um, I don't know what I can say about Copic that hasn't been said before. They're good pens. They smell good. Mm. <laughs> Just it's not uh, no fewer xylenes. Yeah, they're alcohol based. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm I'm really happy to see that uh, Moleskine's um, actual sketchbooks are still using better quality paper because their notebooks went to just garbage quality oh, really? paper. Like really thin, easy to tear. Uh, that's like ink. Just goes right through them. Don't buy Moleskine oh, yeah. notebooks. They're this, overpriced. This now. is the one problem with these is that they bleed really hard. Mm. So I need like an insert sheet. Oh, okay. They just like bleed all over the place, but they look so nice. Mm. Um, so I've got four tones of, I think this is cool gray, which is mm -hmm. basically the same thing. Um, this is a big fucking deal. I, oh. I searched high and low yeah. to find an opaque white that was worth anything, mm -hmm. and I couldn't until is this... I found this, which I'm hoping is, has some left in it. I've probably almost run it out, but like this is a, a, like a paint marker. Yeah, this one's almost out of, uh, out of ink. But this goes on opaque and stays mm. opaque. Is this the deleter? No, this is uh, oh, Posca. Posca. Oh, okay. They're so good because like they come in a bunch of different sizes. This one's 0.7 millimeter, which is 
quite fine. Mm -hmm. So you can do like corrections, but you can also just do like little details and like highlighting Ooh. and stuff like that. Um, and because it's nice and opaque, it'll actually show up. Nice. Because every other one, like the paints and shit, you know, you'll paint it on. Oh, that looks pretty good. Two seconds later, it dries into milk. Right. And you're just like, ah! I've, I've also used one of those um, for, like, marking, uh, like, cables and stuff. Yeah. Like, putting, because obviously most cables are, uh, you know, black. And so you can put mm. uh, various markings per semi-permanently on the... Uh, yeah. Or on adapters or things. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The um, jelly rolls are not bad and pretty cheap, but I just think this is way better. Okay. Um, the only one that I didn't like was there's a brush version mm -hmm. that did not work for some reason. I don't know Weird. if I got a bad one. Huh. They're also, like, way more expensive. Like, 15 bucks a pen. Wolf. Yeah, and they're just not good. Um, I also got this teeny tiny ruler mm, mm -hmm. for the, the handful of straight lines that I draw. It's very small. When you're doing perspective work? Yeah. Oh, perspective. I'm getting better you, at it. You got really good at it. Thank you. Um, Other than that, I've got my keychain. Oh, yeah, I suppose. And this USB key that looks like Hello Kitty. Oh, God, where did her face go? Uh, I suppose I could also do the same thing. This is my watch. It is a Benris... Um, I, I suspect that this is actually not a Benris, but rather a like a knockoff with the word Benris written on the face. But Benris, uh, this is um, I, I suspect this is a replica or a copy of a replica Benris issued of their World War II GI watch. Mm. Um, it's a kinetic tumbler, so it's a wind-up watch, but you can just wear it and it will stay wound because it, you know, the the thing you see some people do occasionally who had to wear them would be they would roll their wrist back and forth what? a couple of times to get the the weight really starting it's, and then it's like the uh, old school version of the of the like close your circles or whatever it's like if you're so sedentary that your watch stops <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no, maybe you, yeah no you're doing something wrong uh so yeah that that's that's the watch last two pieces of edc and my wallet yeah I've... my this i think my first girlfriend gave me this wallet and it's you know, it's it's kind of held up. I have two credit or I have credit card, debit card, um, driver's license. I don't carry cash anymore. I could probably replace this with like, I don't know, a card. Yeah, a card. Yeah, nothing fancy, wallet-wise. Mm -hmm. I have a sock. Hmm. <laughs> um, I had a duct tape wallet for a while that I really liked. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it turns out that apart from the whole you know, coolness of a duct tape wallet. Duct tape as a material is just actually like really great for a wallet. Like it's oh, just because really? it's very, like it's thin, it's right. strong and stuff. Um, and of course it's fine up until it gets hot during the summer and it starts then this sort of slightly- Evolve melt. glue. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, that made sorry. Me sad. I, uh, I also put this on a black nylon uh, NATO strap and a NATO strap is like this single piece Operator, operator, operator. Yeah, operator, like, operator, because operator. I'm such an operator. Yeah, that's true. I, I just had to cut this one down because I have tiny little wrists. Teensy wrists. You've got small, you know what they say, those um, guys with small wrists. And Some I, short wrist, wrist bands. Indeed. And uh, I wear it on the inside of my wrist because I'm a, a fancy man. If money, okay, I'm so. I'm a very fancy man. This I wear is my what, watch on the inside of my wrist. This is what we wrist. do carry. If money was no object, what would you carry? Probably a uh, bitch made belly song. Well, I mean, like I, I, I read there was uh, or read an article written by somebody who's like, you can generally sit in a city and figure out how much money people have by how much they have to carry with them. Really? Right. The wealthy people don't carry anything because they have a credit card. Right. That acts as a virtual anything at any time they need it. Whereas if you're homeless, you carry your entire world with you. Wow. Right. Huh. Most of us are somewhere in between those two. So like. I, I've pared this down quite a lot where I am carrying a book I am reading, I carry something to make notes in, I carry stuff to make notes with, and I carry a laptop computer in case I want to sit anywhere and play Starting Valley for a little while because I don't read papers anymore since my dream is dead. Um, <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Uh, I used to carry a DS. I don't play uh, mobile games at all anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to play them a lot. Um, I just haven't had a yen to 
to do that. I don't even play mm. games on my cell phone. I don't know why. Everybody seems to do that. But yeah, I, guess... I, I don't either. I occasionally, like, people will be playing Pokemon Go, and mm. I will download po Pogo again for a little while and play it for about 12 hours, and then it starts to send me notifications, and I'm like, mm, go away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get sort of... I get very annoyed with having to, like, carry a bag or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I, oh, and my everyday carry is not very interesting. It's just, like, mm -hmm. wallet and phone and keys. Yeah, and uh, I, I suppose... It fits in my pockets. I suppose it goes without saying that um, <laughs> we both carry phones with us. This is how invisible these devices have come to become to us, where, um, yeah, I didn't even really think to mention my phone. It is... A, a, an iPhone, what were they called? It was uh, um, the the little ones. This is the six. This this has the same chip in it as the iPhone six. Um, but has a much smaller screen to drive, so it gets a longer battery life and is slightly faster. Se, se, an se. Some... I really like the se. It's it's yeah. good for my tiny hands. If if I, uh, if I can't they, play if, piano, if my they, hands are too small. If they made a new Oh SE, wow! Like a next edition SE, I would. Uh, in, in I would. I would, I would. I would probably go for it. I. I'm definitely in favor of the smaller. Mm. Uh, EDC. Yep. There you go. There's the classic EDC. What kind of Leatherman? Leatherman. Leather, it, Leatherman. This is like my fourth or fifth of this exact model, and I SE really right love it. The other ones mm. I lost. Oh no! I have never had. Because these aren't cheap they're, either, are they're they? Like, 80 bucks now. I think they were more expensive back when I first got it. Mm -hmm. um, these are astonishingly useful, and I've never really had a problem with them. Like, mm -hmm. they just went missing, oh, or okay. someone Like, they, they walked off. Um, so, the best part about the, the Leatherman is that the tools deploy while it's closed. Mm -hmm. So you have, like, um, a straight blade knife, you have... A saw blade? Um, well, it's like a sort of a... Or a bread yeah. knife, kind of kind of a bread scalloped. Knife. Um, you have a saw mm. that's like quite sharp. Two types of file, mm. and then on the inside, um, needle nose pliers, pliers, cutters, wires. Oh, I didn't know there was strippers. a wire cutter and a stripper in there too. It's like a pretty bad stripper, but mm. it'll work in a pinch. Um, there's inch and millimeter mm. gradations. Gradations just. They're not that useful, but like if you need really, really quick reference, mm. that'll work. Um, there's a teeny pair of scissors, which is actually quite useful because they're mm. pretty sharp scissors. Um, there's a very, very small screwdriver that is double-ended. It's got Phillips and mm. slot head on it, which is quite useful. Um, a big, thick boy slot head driver mm -hmm. for just, you know, Whatever you need that for. Uh, the old can opener design. Yeah. What was it? The M or P38 can opener? It's a little bit like that. The P38 folds. Have oh. you ever opened a can with that? Yeah. Nice. Hmm. This is like, I think most people know this as a bottle opener, which it functions as, but this right. is actually a can opener. Right, where you would like ratchet along the side of the can. Yeah, the can for gets like 10 minutes. Fucked up. Also, there's like a line cutter here hmm. where this comes to like a sharp point. Uh, and then. This thing. So this is a, a bit driver that has a double-ended bit on it. And then this kit, which is very, very slender and mm -hmm. fits right in the holster, has the rest of the, the bits. Okay. So it's got um, a variety of slot heads, uh, some Phillips, some, uh, I think it's got like hex and Robertson. So it's just like, you know, anytime you need to quickly turn something, it's super duper useful. Hmm. And it all fits in this like pretty small little holster that I keep on my on my hip. Hmm. I started carrying around a, uh, a flashlight, but I think it might still be too big. Hmm. I think I might get a, a smaller one. So yeah, this is the, the Leatherman Wave that I just have around because I feel super naked without it. Hmm. Um, well, yeah, okay. Is that... I think we, we can wrap this one here. Yeah. It's been a pretty successful stream for a bonus stream. I think, yeah, we should do this again. Oh, so... Found your pencil. <laughs> <sighs>
Uh, HB2, Murado Classic Black. There it's great because because of how you were faced, you never actually turned that ear towards the camera. So. Yep, that's really funny. Perfect. Yeah, we should uh, do this again and just like yeah, end up get maybe, some more guests. Yeah, maybe just next like a show and tell stream. I think is really interesting. I like it. Next time we can talk about like how many reloads we have for our. <laughs> I saw a thread about that, and I was like, oh, oh my yeah, god. Like, yeah, it's weird. The EDC subreddit, sometimes it's like, oh, these are really nice notebooks and pens and like Lighters the things. And, and, yeah, like, oh, this is kind of a cool books. lighter, and like this is an interesting thing about what people carry with them. And then there will also be the ones that's like, this is my Glock, and then like because I carry a 9mm on me, and sometimes I also carry a 45 on the other hip. And these are all my speed reloads, and I'm like... Where do you live? Yeah, like what? Why? Why? Like why? In in a very safe mall. Yeah. They, they call them LARPers. Really. In some <laughs> circles, and it's just like, the, the, you know, it's they they're I mean they're they're building a, a fantasy of you know yeah. self defense which does not exist at all. Yeah, like I because they're completely untrained. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, <laughs> EDC stands for uh, everyday, everyday carry. carry. It's this is my EDC. Everyday carry. Yeah, this is my. It's just like the shit that's on your person mm -hmm. most of the time. So yeah, uh, I guess we should thank subs yeah. and bit givers, and then we can talk about um, tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so while Paul's getting that ready, tonight on Friday night paper fight at six p.m., Alex, me, Adam, and Nelson will be having a tiny little uh, Highlander tournament because we were left in charge of the Magic Stream and we wanted to play Highlander. It's gonna be so Highlander. it's going to be a fair... I think it's a fairly chill... Everyone's brought, you know, like, casual... I can't speak for decks. Nelson. Like, he might just come up... I think Nelson borrowed a de deck from Jer because Nelson is currently... He's moving and his deck was packed. Oh, okay. So, so he he's borrowed something. I, mm. I'm not even sure he knows what's in it. So that probably doesn't means that it's not... Uh, curb your enthusiasm, which is nice. Okay, yeah, so we're not just going to be like, no. Taking no, turns, no. taking turns, taking turns. Kill you, <laughs> eventually. Uh, so it should be, you know, some fairly chill, not super sweaty magic. <laughs> if you want to if you wanna tune in for that. Um, yeah, it should be fun. Let's bring on the subs. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you to uh, everybody watching the stream. And, uh, oh, also... Uh, uh, tomorrow, Cam's going to be uh, oh yeah, I'm going to do Destiny. A, yeah, bonus stream. Uh, Destiny Two is getting a new multiplayer mode, if, with a new expansion that comes out on Tuesday, which I'll be playing on New Day Tuesday. But tomorrow they're previewing the new multiplayer mode for 24 hours. So I'm going to have a bunch of friends on, and we're going to give it a shot and see what it's about. It's called Gambit. Cool. It is a mixed PvP PVE game. Uh, and also, of course, um, over the next. Uh, this weekend, uh, though, there's uh, a few of the uh, PAX panels that uh, oh, yeah, we'll the be hosting. members of the crew will be uh, involved in and will be hosting. Awesome. Unfortunately, not everything. I don't think the actual like Lonely Ray Run panel is in a streamed room, but oh. uh, some of the other ones will be. So Okay. Uh, all right. So and I want to thank everybody mm -hmm. uh, who subscribed during the stream, starting with... I'll start. A moral ethicist has come back for the 22nd month. Bonus Cam and Alex, a fine Friday afternoon treat. Rysex for 44 months. Rip Lurst out. Oh, wow, we're right, we're right, <laughs> right here. here. Wait, am I? Blue Mechanic, 51 months. I'm ready to be shown and told to. <laughs> Conda 020946 for nine months. Welcome back. British Red Cap is a brand new subscriber. Thank you for deciding to support us. That is where they're from, right? I probably. Red Caps, Bogarts. Uh, Darth Studicus for five months. Remember month one, two, not three, or four. I am confused. Hmm. Togashi Naruto has come back for 56 months. Alex and Cameron talking about whatever they want. One of my favorite things. The GC Smith for 12 months. 12 months, that's one month short of a baker's year. <laughs> the Stuck on Geometer has come back for eight months saying, hey guys, I think you're cool. Oh. Don't know why. <laughs> Dilox82 for 36 months. A tiny space marine is resub for the 50th month, so very, very many months. So like epic scale? Yeah. You remember epic? Yeah, it had titans. They were like that big. Yeah, the, the space marines markers. looked extra thick. Yeah, they were huge. Uh, sorry, Spectrum 14 for eight months. 
John Praz come back for six months. This is cool shit. I like it. We like you. Sprunder score for 20 months. Welcome. Jagophile is a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. The Bob 58 for 17 months. Welcome back. Fibblethip Lost But Seeking has resubbed for the 13th month. You are now aware of your teeth. I'm always aware of my teeth. Dakin 1993 for eight months. Welcome back. JD Toaster has resubbed for the 12th month. Happy one year. Thanks for the chill stream. More of this. Uh, Cryptocopter is a new sub. Welcome to the channel. Cricket Chirps has resubbed for the sixth month. Today I have brought many sub messages to share with everyone. It may not be impressive, but it means a lot to me. Hope you all like it. Oh, thank you. Uh, Dammer MCM for two months. Left-handed problems. Nice Roll has come back for the 23rd month. Well, the show and tell, I brought my resub. Thank you. Konica is a new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. Insane Muad'Dib has come back for the fifth month. Isn't that every Muad'Dib? It's regular Muad'Dib. Uh, the Exles for six months. Yeah, ADC stream. Hydra Wiggins is back for the 23rd month. Cut one Wiggins down. And two, uh, if two more grow to replace him, that would be quite upsetting. Mm. Jigokuro for 28 months. Cameron Lauder, the unarmed oracle. You may already know this, but your name also anagrams to Cream Unloader. <laughs> it does. I, that was one of the, the, the ones that I was like, yeah, that's funny. I can't use that on an email. Also, Marauder Clone. Ooh. Caramel Undoer was I've... also one that had like, you know... One of those double Nintendos. I've never tried anagramming my name. The X may be hard, but could be fertile. Hmm. Like, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, Nice and 29 has come back for the sixth month. I just got here and have no idea what happened. Love you all so much, though. Love you, too. And thanks for the 500, or 50, yeah, 551 bits. Earth and Un, Mr. SVCD, WF Geisterlofel, Twimney, RT Tycoon 2, and Lady Luck Handmaiden. So, um... Uh, we'll be back in, like, two and a half hours, but I like think that. we'll be hosting the... Is it the Jackbox stream? Yes, I believe that'll be going on in, uh, yeah, just a little under half an hour. All right, so if you want to see a bunch of Lure people uh, play Jackbox games at PAX, we'll be hosting that stream. So, and, yeah, yeah. And oh, also, uh, when we were talking about uh, subscriptions there, I did also want to say a uh, big thank you to everybody supporting our... Patreon, mm, mm -hmm. patreon.com slash loading ready run, uh, which has uh, surpassed the 13,000 mark. It is higher oh, wow. than it's ever been. Hey. Oh, wow. So thank, thank you, you all so, much. so very much. Uh, and I, I just wanted to say that today because uh, it, it always, you, you know, usually uh, uh, when you go over the um, the month border, there'll be some fluctuations there. But before we, before uh, September 1st, we definitely have hit that mark. What's so. that, Paul? We lost dead weight and made money? <laughs> <laughs> All right, barricade the doors. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be back in just a little while, but uh, thank you all for watching. Yeah, see you in a few hours, Chad.